Are you ready to take the lead in the dance of life? Fall in love with who you are right now and find uninhibited joy every day? Then it's time for you to flaunt your smart, sexy, and spiritual self. Join radio host Laura Cheadle and learn how the five steps of flaunt can help you quit seeking approval, proving your worth, and release you from the judgment of others. Express all that you are, discover your naked self-worth, and finally, enjoy the life you've worked so hard to create. Welcome. You're listening to Flaunt, the podcast for women who are ready to get to know themselves and show themselves unapologetically for who they most authentically are, not for who they think they should be, so they can re-choreograph the next stage of their life on their own terms, and so they can live with enthusiasm, joy, and satisfaction. Today's topic, I hope, triggers you a little bit. Today's topic, I hope, makes you sit back or put on the brakes <laughs> and go, whoa, what is she talking about? Today's topic is about embracing your sexy. Even if you don't think you have a sexy bone in your body or if the idea of being sexy kind of scares you. Now, were you triggered just a little bit? I kind of hope that you were. I kind of hope that you're having thoughts like, <laughs> being sexy, are you kidding me? I am a mature, competent woman. Why do I want to think about being sexy? That's exactly the point. We have this idea that sexy is something that it's not. And that's my intention for the show today. Today, I want to break down those layers of belief, those layers of fear and judgment and show you, convince you why embracing your sexy is actually imperative to a good, rich, juicy, fulfilled life that has possibly nothing to do with actual sex. <laughs> so let's start by talking about what does it even mean to be sexy? Because believe me, there's a lot, and I mean a lot, of misconceptions out there about what that means. Even the word sexy, <laughs> which is such a provocative word, comes with a lot of baggage. Most women simultaneously want to be sexy and are also terrified and resist being sexy. On the one hand, the media, our culture, tells women, tells us, that we need to be sexy and that our worthiness is tied to how sexy and young and beautiful we are. But on the other hand, we are judged. We're judged for trying too hard. Have you ever heard somebody say that? <laughs> well, she looks great, but you can tell she's trying way too hard. Oh, really? Because on the other hand, what do we hear? Why doesn't she try at all? If she tried just a little bit, she'd be pretty. Hmm. So we can't try too hard, but we also have to try how much is enough. That's a slippery slope. Also, women are accused of using their bodies to get ahead, using their looks to get ahead. How often do you hear somebody saying that about a man? Oh, well, he just used his rugged good looks to get ahead. No, the default position is that men are smart. And the default position is that a woman who is too beautiful or too sexy must not be smart. The other thing, the other reason that the word sexy and being sexy carry so much baggage is the fact that for our entire life, 
we have been taught to believe that the way we look influences the way other people, and especially men, treat us. Has anybody ever said to you, you don't want to do that, you're going to give him the wrong idea? We are not to blame if somebody sexually assaults us. We are not to blame if somebody has the wrong idea. If somebody has the wrong idea about us, they have the wrong idea about us. No wonder we are all confused about being sexy and what it really means. And today, I want to get back in touch with what it really means to be sexy. Because being sexy and embracing your sexy is not something that you do for another person. Being sexy is a state of being for you. It's a state of delicious feeling and connection to how it feels to inhabit your body and your spirit. So let's start. You know, I'm a former lawyer. I like going back to definitions. Let's start with a definition of sexy and kind of break it down from there. According to the Oxford Dictionary, sexy by definition is about two different things. It's about arousal and attraction. Now, for the purpose of today's show, I want you to think about sexy, arousal, and attraction in everyday terms. Let's start with attraction. You can be attracted to a lover or a spouse or a partner, of course, but you're also attracted to your friends. We're attracted to babies and kids. We're attracted to animals. Heck, I am attracted to shoes and to makeup palettes and to certain fragrances. I'm attracted to paint colors and food. And I'm even attracted to cleaning products. I've got a huge love affair going on with some cleaning products right now that have got the essential oils in it. And I love it. And I'm finding excuses to clean because I'm having so much fun with that. Attraction drives you towards something that you want. Attraction is fun. It propels you. It brings you joy. Think about attraction in terms of food. If you have something icky and gross and something yummy and gooey and delicious, you want to eat what you're attracted to. It's fun. It feels good. That's why eating is sexy sometimes. That's why we relish and revel in food because we have an attraction to it. And that's fun. Talk about being whatever it is, the crazy cat lady. (laughs) You're attracted towards cats. Attraction is really fun. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever felt lost or totally disconnected from life? Like life is just hollow and empty and it's not what it's supposed to be. If you have ever felt that way, and it's my guess that you have, go back in your mind to one of those empty times. Go back just for a moment and think about that. More than likely, you felt empty and depressed and lost and hollow because you weren't attracted to anything. Think about it when people are depressed. Either they overeat, but they're not getting any satisfaction out of the food, so they're just like, eat, 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 because they're trying desperately to feel that attraction, to feel that desire, or on the flip side, they can't eat. I've had so many friends and clients who have gotten a divorce 
and have lost all this weight. And they jokingly refer to it as the divorce diet because nothing tastes good. Nothing feels good. There's no attraction towards eating, towards taking care of themselves. There's no joy because they're not being pulled towards something because they're in this deep, dark period of untangling and going within and reassessing. How was it for you when you felt lost, depressed, disconnected? Were you attracted to anything? Because chances are you weren't. And when you're not feeling attracted, you're not embracing your sexy and you feel lost because you had no idea what it was you were doing. I'm not sure if you've ever heard Malcolm Gladwell's TED Talk on spaghetti sauce of all things, <laughs> but that TED Talk sums up this concept really well. What that TED Talk was about was the fact that most of us don't know what we want. In that TED Talk, he talks about the fact that when people are asked, what kind of spaghetti sauce do you want? They all say, I like authentic spaghetti sauce, real authentic Italian spaghetti sauce. But then in taste tests, that's not what people choose at all. They actually actively dislike the authentic spaghetti sauce. And it's the same way with coffee. People will talk about what I want is, what I like is a bold, rich cup of coffee. But then in a taste test, they prefer something that is not bold and rich. They prefer a medium roast, probably with some cream or some sugar. And it's really kind of funny because we don't know what we want. No matter how old you are, what do you want to be when you grow up? How many times have you thought that to yourself? Or have you heard somebody say that? I don't even know what I want to be when I grow up. Wow, here I am 50 years old, 60 years old, 40 years old. I have no idea what I want to be. That's so common. How do you want to spend your days? Most people never step back and ask that question of themselves because they're so busy going to work, commuting, dropping off the dry cleaning, cooking, cleaning, driving carpool, helping kids with homework. And then they're exhausted and they just crash on the couch, maybe with some wine, watching TV until it's time to go to bed. Most people never have that opportunity to get into that attraction to really feel that pull and that desire of what it is they want to do. What it is they want to spend their days doing. How do you want to show up in this world? How do you want to be in this world? And the big question is what is the gap between what you are actually doing day in and day out? Just kind of getting through each day, taking care of what needs to be done and how you really want to live. Most women, the most people say they want something more. They're tired of living this old way, but they have no idea what they really desire, which is why people stay stuck, stuck in marriages, stuck in jobs, stuck in a body that they don't like, but they don't really know what it is that they desire because they're not allowing themselves to embrace their sexy to move into what attracts them. So instead of doing the work and figuring it out, most people just borrow 
from somebody else's idea of what they should want. Oh, an iPhone, the new iPhone. That's going to make me happy. I'm totally attracted to the new iPhone. That's going to do it. And they get it and it's thrilling, but it doesn't change their life. A certain brand of shoes. Embracing a certain yoga practice or a fitness regime. Wine, chocolate, carbs, tall, dark, and handsome men, whatever it is. We chase these things because we think, well, if everybody else wants it, and and if a Mercedes makes them happy, maybe it's going to make me happy. And if a third child makes them happy, maybe it's going to make me happy too, because yeah, I can see how fun that would be. But the point is, it's only half-hearted attraction, and it's attraction because somebody else is attracted to it. It's not attraction based on what you actually want. So it's not sexy. And if it's not sexy, it is absolutely not satisfying. So to get you in touch with embracing your sexy through attraction I want to do a little exercise with you. And it doesn't matter what you're doing right now. If you're washing dishes or if you're driving or if you're running, it doesn't matter. You can do this exercise. I want you to think about the last movie or the last series that you chose to watch. Not that somebody else chose for you, but that you chose to watch. Doesn't matter if it's on Amazon Prime or Netflix or HBO or whatever it is. I want you to think about what attracted you to that movie or series. What attracted you to want to watch it? Was it the picture? The movie poster? Was it that you watched the preview and decided based on the preview that you wanted to watch it? Was it the feeling the preview left you with? Like the adrenaline rush from the action? Was it like the sweeping music and then this feeling of romance and getting carried away? You know, the power of the audio or the power of the feelings? Or was it like, oh, I love Kate Winslet. Look at her. I'm totally going to watch this. This is amazing. What was it that attracted you to the movie versus just looking at the rating and saying, well, if everybody else likes it and it got 4.8 out of five stars, maybe I'm going to like it too. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's the difference between relying on somebody else's judgment and actually feeling that attraction on your own. Give it some time. Think about it. And the next time you're selecting a movie or a TV series or a book, think about what it is that is attracting you, that is pulling you in. And just for fun, notice if you're more attracted to sights or to sounds or to feelings, or what it is that's pulling you in. Because when you are able to tune in to what attracts you, you will be able to embrace your sexy. Keep this exercise going over the next week, over the next month, for the rest of your life. Keep it going. Feel attraction. Attraction to others, attraction to things, attraction to life, attraction to adventure. I'm attracted to really deep conversation. I am attracted to things that smell good. I don't care if it's natural or synthetic. I love Bath and Body Works. I love essential oils. I love chocolate chip cookies baking. I love smells. I love 
a little bit of adrenaline. I love unknown experiences. I am attracted to adventure. What about you? When you know what you're attracted to, you know how to enrich your life, how to feed and give yourself more. The next part of embracing your sexy after attraction is arousal. (laughs) Arousal is what happens when you're attracted to something. Being aroused is all about being connected to the senses. But just like with anything that you want to get better at, whether it's crocheting or working out or cooking or speaking, if you want to get better at something, you have to practice it. And it is such a misconception that has been put on us that if things are right, if our Prince Charming shows up, we are aroused. If we are in our dream job, we are aroused every single day. If we're truly happy with our families, every day we'll be aroused, we'll be aroused with joy. That is not true. And that could not be further from the truth. If you want to be aroused, if you want to be connected to your senses, you have to practice. And embracing your sexy is all about practicing attraction and practicing arousal. I've got another little exercise for you that's going to help. I want you to imagine the most wonderful, romantic, night possible with a partner of your dreams, real or imaginary, it doesn't matter. And I also want you to imagine the most magical holiday ever, whether it's like a scene out of a Norman Rockwell movie or painting or something else. I just want you to imagine that, what it would be like the laughter, the joy, the turkey cooking, the whole experience. Now, in imagining those two experiences, the most romantic night of your life and the most magical holiday ever, do you think more about what's going on or the feelings that you have? Does it matter more that you're in Paris walking along the Seine with, you know, umbrella in hand, music in the background, or does it matter more about how you're feeling? Does it matter more that you are taking a sleigh ride in the freshly fallen snow, eating cheese, drinking wine, or is it more about the laughter and watching the faces of those you love, your heart bursting with joy, gazing into somebody's eyes, overflowing with love, savoring quality time. Which is it? There's no right and there's no wrong. We're all different. And yes, we're all kind of a mixture of the two. But knowing what arouses you is vitally important in embracing your sexy, in living a rich, fulfilled life. If you're more aroused by the things, by the activities, then you can plan those things. You can plan and do and create the things that arouse you in your life. You can make that meal, find that company that does sleigh rides. Plan the trip to Paris. Buy the kind of outfit that you envision. But if you're the kind of person who's more aroused by the sensations or the feelings or the emotions, you've got to plan and know and practice that too. 
for people who tend to prioritize emotions and connections and feelings, those kind of people, and I'm one of them, tend to be more disappointed, tend to feel disconnected or hollow or empty at times because we're working so hard to create something that sometimes we miss the moment. And that's sad. We live in a world that focuses on things. And we're literally told our whole life that things will bring us the kinds of feelings that we expect, but they don't. And when they do, it tends to be short-lived. Now, don't get me wrong. I love things. <laughs> I love things. They're fun. But so often I've had the experience where I put more weight on a thing and it just disappoints and it can't provide the kind of feeling that I'm craving, the kind of feeling that I want to experience. And then I think I'm wrong or I think I'm broken. And I know you've probably felt that way too, where you can look around and you think everybody else is getting it. Why am I not getting it? Why am I not feeling the love here? Everybody else is in some kind of revelry and here I sit. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just that you're not aroused because you weren't attracted and you need to feel that arousal and you need to feel that attraction. And it's not sexy unless you have both pieces of it. You're artificially thinking that you should be attracted to something that you're not or you're not practicing getting into the feelings of the arousal, you're focusing more on an idea or a setting. Are you living an aroused life? Because being aroused is what makes life juicy and delicious. And truly, it's what makes life worth living. What's going on for you right now? Are you flat? Are you resentful? Are you cynical or disappointed? If you are, you probably need more arousal in your life. And I can absolutely show you how to get that. First, you need to be in touch with what attracts you. But even if you're in touch with what attracts you, you still have to practice arousal. And arousal is the result of tuning into your five or six senses. Now, as a highly intuitive person who believes that everybody on the planet is also highly intuitive, it's just that we haven't been conditioned to pay attention to that sixth sense, I absolutely feel that our sixth sense, our sense of knowing, is important, but some people don't, and that's totally fine too. Now, again, it doesn't matter where you are, but if you're doing something like driving an automobile or working with heavy machinery and you need to maintain full awakened consciousness, please don't go into this visualization super deep. If you have three minutes to actually turn your phone off and to relax, I highly recommend that too. If you can, sit back and close your eyes. <sighs> Roll your shoulders. <sighs> Take a couple of breaths just to tune yourself into your body. And I want you to move your attention into the center, center, center of your body. 
It doesn't matter if it's into the womb space or to the solar plexus. Just move that attention within. Relax your legs, your arms, your head, face, <sighs> belly, back and chest. Now I want you to imagine, visualize or pretend that it's a beautiful summer's day, not too hot, not too cold, just perfect and perfectly clear. Look up and see that sky. See the blueness. See if the sky is the exact same color from horizon to horizon. Or if there's variations in that color. See the clouds. Are there clouds? Are they puffy white? Are they wispy? Or is it literally a day where there is not a cloud in the sky? See it as clearly as you can in your mind's eye and practice seeing it. And now in your mind's eye, walk barefoot across a carpet of rich green grass. And as you walk barefoot across this lawn, feel the cool grass under your feet. Feel the slightest dampness of earth. The thick cushiness of the grass and occasionally feel the mound from a root <laughs> that gently throws you off balance as you walk under the trees. Feel those feet in the grass, on the earth. From off in the distance, you hear the whir of a lawnmower starting up. Move your head and see if you can ascertain where that sound is coming from. See if you can tell if the lawnmower is moving away or towards you. And as you're listening, the sound of the lawnmower occasionally interrupted by the chirping of birds nor the laughter of children, nor the barking of a dog. Take a breath and notice that that smell of freshly cut grass has come your way. Ah, and as you breathe it in, let that smell carry you back to a memory of a summer past, of people, of times. Mm, breathe in that smell and let those memories drift in. And as you're there standing on the grass, smelling that fresh cut grass, hearing the whir of that lawnmower. Under this beautiful blue sky, allow a sense of knowing to come in. It's a gift. A knowing about you, about your life. And it's a sense of knowing that you know, but sometimes you can't put words to, and that is okay. Just feel and know. 
And with a breath, slowly return to the present time, to your body, to your heart. That's what it feels like to embrace your sexy, to be aroused, to know what attracts you. And absolutely, yes, you can and you should practice being aroused every day. Notice colors, notice shadows, notice textures, hear the beautiful richness of sound and smell and connect and touch right now, wherever you're at, stroke your head, feel your hair, maybe you're bald. Feel your head and notice simultaneously what it feels like to touch and to be touched. <sighs> Before we take a little break, I challenge you to complete this sentence. I am attracted Two, just one thing. I am attracted to. And then complete this next sentence. I am aroused when. I am aroused when. And then the very last sentence before our quick break. I am sexy when. I am sexy when. And don't think too hard. I'm sexy when I'm happy. I'm sexy when I'm wide awake. I'm sexy when I'm pleasantly full. That is your sexy mantra, and I want you to feel it and use it and believe it. Pull that mantra out whenever you need it. And now for our quick break. Today's show is brought to you by Burlesque and Bubbly. Ah! <laughs> Do you know what Burlesque and Bubbly is? I am about to tell you. Burlesque and Bubbly is a weekly drop-in dance class for women, and it will change your life. This is a one-hour class that is lightly choreographed. It's suitable for women of any age, any size, any ability. It doesn't matter if you've danced or not. It's suitable for anybody who wants to get in touch with their own beautiful self Again, the choreography helps build new neural pathways in your brain. So it strengthens your brain. It challenges you, that body-mind connection. It challenges that. It enriches, it enlivens you. And it's so much fun. It's a much better workout than you would ever think about too. Because you're having fun and you're laughing and you're thinking about this choreography. And before you know it, you're like, oh, wow. I've actually worked out and I've had so much fun doing it. And the best part about the class, I think, is the connection with other women where you can authentically talk about what it means to be sexy at any age, what it means to confront sexism or ageism, where you can talk about the challenges of empty nesting or menopause or anything that's going on. And the reason I say bubbly, burlesque and bubbly, is I encourage you to bring something bubbly and delicious to drink after class, whether it's champagne or kombucha or sparkling water. The sparkle is up to you. But the bottom line is we all deserve to be sexy, to feel sexy, to embrace 
our sexy by knowing what attracts us and being bold enough to claim it and by practicing feeling aroused and living an aroused life. Now you can join me every Friday from four to five mountain time. Like I said, it's just a weekly drop-in class. It's $10 a week and it's on Zoom. So it doesn't matter where you're at. Of course, you can turn your camera off, but it's way more fun to keep it on. And trust me, everybody is worried about themselves and they're looking at me. They're not looking at you anyway. Trust me on that. To sign up and to get the schedule, go to burlesqueandbubbly.com. Burlesque can be hard to spell. I get that. It's B-U-R-L-E-S-Q-U-E and A-N-D. Bubbly. B-U-B-B-L-Y dot com. When you go to burlesqueandbubbly.com, I will shoot you the schedule. You just sign up, get your Zoom link, and voila, you are in. And now, back to the program. We spent the whole first half of the program talking about what sexy is. It's attraction, it's arousal, and then how to embrace our sexy. But we didn't talk about what sexy is not. And that's what I want to do now because that is so important. And I am so passionate about what is not sexy. And by what I mean, what I mean when I say what is not sexy, I don't mean the typical things that you might be thinking about, like morning breath. (laughs) Sexy is not what the media tells you it is. Let's break this down. You've heard the phrase sex sells? Yeah. The reason sex sells is because all humans want to be sexy. All humans want to live a life of attraction and arousal. We are all sexy just the way we are because we're all capable of being attracted to things and of feeling arousal. We have all of these senses. We all have the ability to do this just as we are. Embracing our sexy as we are means that we don't need to buy products or services. The media is all about advertising dollars. In order to make money, advertisers have to convince you that something is wrong with you and that they have a product that can fix you. There's nothing wrong with that. And we do sometimes have problems that we need fixed. What's wrong with that is the way we start believing that we're broken when we're not broken at all. Look at some of these numbers. The diet and fitness industry is a $96 billion industry. The self-help industry is an $11 billion industry. Think about this. Cellulite never used to be a problem. Cellulite never used to be a block to being sexy. Until somebody had a cellulite cream or a cellulite machine that they needed to sell. And the only way they could get you to buy it is by convincing you that you're not sexy if you have cellulite and that you need their machine or their cream to fix. Same thing with shaving our legs. Did you know that throughout history, (laughs) until very modern history, Women didn't shave their legs. Shaving your legs became a thing when the razor company wanted to move the market from men just shaving their face to women because they were missing out on sales from half of the population. That's why there is a false image 
of what is sexy. That's why you don't feel sexy. Not because you aren't. You are not too fat. You are not too skinny. You are not too ugly. You are not too short or too tall. Your feet are not too big. Your skin is not wrong. You are sexy because you're alive. Because being sexy doesn't really have much of anything to do with how you look. It has to do with how you are. It has to do with attraction, your attraction towards something, not somebody else's attraction towards you, but you and your attraction towards somebody else. And it has to do with arousal. What is making you feel aroused? To help with that, because I know there's times where we all feel totally unsexy and that's okay. I'd like you to write down, if you've got the ability to do that, or give yourself a little voice memo, two or three things that you're aroused by. Like I said earlier, I'm aroused by good sense. I'm aroused by spirit, by intuition. I'm aroused by learning new things. I'm aroused by the endorphin rush of exercise. And I use those reminders when I'm feeling unsexy, when I'm feeling blah, when I'm feeling like I'm not attracted to anybody and nobody's going to be attracted to me. And listen to what I just said, because therein lies a huge secret. If I'm not attracted to anything, nobody's going to be attracted to me because I'm dead and I'm hollow and I'm not aroused. Think about the people that you want to meet, the people that you want to be friends with. They're like, oh, this is yummy. Ooh, this is wonderful. Let's go here. I want to try this new movie. I want to go over here. I want to. We are attracted to people who are attracted to things. We are aroused by people who are aroused by things. What is sexy is that. It is not about your shape or your size or your age or whether or not you have gray hair. It's about attraction and arousal. Now, the next piece of this is now that you know what sexy is, now that you know what sexy is not, another thing to think about is what is blocking your sexy? Because if you're anything like me, there's times where you're like, yeah, I get it. And something's in the way and I'm not exactly sure how to get there. It's one bridge too far. I get it, but it's not for me. It is for you. Like I started off by saying at the very beginning, sexy is such a loaded word and there's so much judgment. We've got a huge fear of judgment around being sexy because we don't want people to think the wrong things about us. We don't want people to think that we're a bad mom, that we're a bad partner, that we're using our sexy to get ahead. In order to embrace your sexy, you need to release and to recognize what's blocking your sexy. What is your fear around embracing your sexy? Go ahead and just say it. Is it a fear of being assaulted? Is it the safety thing? I'm afraid to embrace it because I'm afraid I'm going to get attacked. It's a physical root safety fear. Is it a fear of being ostracized? Is it a fear of being judged incorrectly? Is it a fear of being ridiculed? Name that fear. There is such a huge power in naming and getting it out there. Because so often when we keep something inside, it just grows and bubbles up and festers. 
Now, this is where the power of burlesque comes in. As you may or may not know, yes, I'm a lawyer, but I'm also a burlesque dancer. Burlesque is a parody. Burlesque pokes fun of all of the things in our world that are taboo, that are hypocritical. Think about female breasts. There's controversy around whether a woman can breastfeed her child in public or not. But at the same time, we all love great movies and great TV shows that show breasts. Everybody loves Bridgerton. Everybody wants to see more. Everybody talks about these, you know, amazing sex scenes. Why is that okay? But breastfeeding your child is not. It's hypocritical. And it's okay that we're hypocritical. But in order to release blocks around that, we just have to recognize it and release it. And that is what burlesque is all about. Burlesque is about removing the layers. It's about getting real. On the outside, a burlesque performer looks sexy and perfect and all pulled together. But what you don't see underneath is the corset holding in the waist, the padded bra lifting up the breasts, or the stockings smoothing out the cellulite and the varicose veins. As the burlesque performer starts stripping down, you as the audience get to see the reality under the fantasy. And that is powerful. But going back to what I said about sex sells, we don't get to see the reality because the reality doesn't sell products. If we see the reality, if we see that bodies change as they age, bodies change after they have babies, most people have stretch marks of, or flab or something, or hair. If we see that reality, we suddenly know we're okay and we can relax and we can be sexy and then we don't need to buy their product. So that's why this image is put out there. This message is put out there. I didn't start dancing burlesque until I was 44 years old. And believe me, there was a lot of fear around what people would think of me for wanting to dance burlesque. My first reaction was actually, oh, I could never do that. Which is funny because that's a meaningless statement. It's so much like the difference between can I be excused or may I be excused? Of course I could dance burlesque. The real question was not, oh, I could never do that. The real question was, could I let go of whatever it was that was blocking me, that was stopping me from embracing my sexy and dancing burlesque? I asked you earlier to name that fear. And that's what I had to do. Just like a burlesque performer strips out of the costumes, I had to strip off these different layers of my fear, one layer at a time, to try to get to what was underneath. As you might imagine, there were a lot of different fears in there. There are some obvious ones. The fear of being called too old or too fat or too ugly or too bad of a dancer. All of those things, those were real fears. But underneath that, there was also a fear of being seen as a show-off, an exhibitionist, a fear of somebody thinking I was amoral or a bad mom. There was a fear that people would think I was so weird that they wouldn't want to be around me anymore. And once I started stripping down, taking off the layers of those fears, I was able to get to those real deep fears. The fear of being alone, the fear of being misunderstood. And start addressing what was really going on, which all boiled down to my lack 
of self-worth. I call it naked self-worth, which is the ability to value yourself for who you are wholly. And it's deeper and it's more authentic than regular self-worth because it ties your satisfaction wholly to you. And it allows you to set your own standards and to validate your own worth instead of relying on anyone or anything outside of you. What are you afraid of? I want you to be able to strip out of those surface fears of being ridiculed, of being too old, too fat, too whatever, and to really challenge yourself to get to the root of that fear. So often it is self-worth, the fear of being rejected. Name that fear, uncover that fear. Because when you name it and you uncover it, it loses power over you. What are you afraid of? Embracing your sexy means tuning in to what you are attracted to, tuning in and practicing living an aroused life. And it means releasing everything that is blocking you from feeling that attraction and that arousal, from releasing that judgment, naming your fear, having naked self-worth. And when you reconnect to your naked self-worth, you become brave enough to live life enthusiastically on your own terms. You live the kind of life where you wake up with excitement every day. Yes, difficult things happen, but you're living in a state of joy. You're having fun. Every night you fall into bed And there's a sense of satisfaction, of a day well lived, even when things go wrong. When you embrace your sexy, you will never be numb or flat or disconnected or overwhelmed or bitter or resentful any ever. Because you'll be in touch with you. You'll let go of the media's idea of what it means to be sexy. You'll release that fear of judgment. And you will truly maybe for the first time ever, live. Yes, it takes time. It's a process. But no, it's not hard because above all else, you are not broken. You do not need to be fixed. All you need to do is strip down. And what I like to say, flaunt who you are, your good parts, your bad parts, who you are. Not who you think you should be for others. Go to burlesqueandbubbly.com. Get some more information. Your first class is free. You've got nothing to lose. How do you want to live? Join me again next week where we talk about happiness. But in the meantime, It is my heart's desire to see you at a burlesque and bubbly class. Burlesqueandbubbly.com. Have an amazing week. And as usual, always remember to flaunt exactly who you are, because who you are is always more than enough. Tune in next time to Flaunt. Build your dreams, live your sparkle with radio host Laura Cheadle every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Overcome the need to please and find the uninhibited joy of being exactly who you are right now. Come find your fetish, laugh out loud, accept unconditionally, navigate the negative, and trust in your truth. 
Find out more and get your free gift at lauracheadle.com. That's L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E.com. 